Thank you. Good afternoon, um, everybody. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to be here. Uh, I am going to be speaking um, on the topic of aid effectiveness. Have we uh, learned anything? And I want to caveat that um, to begin with by just saying that, of course, this is only uh, I'm only going to speak about a relatively small part of what is a, an enormous literature about foreign aid and the economics of foreign aid. Um, I'm going to really speak about four, four things. I'm going to briefly provide a definition about what we mean by aid effectiveness. Those of you in the room who are familiar with the literature uh, will not be surprised about what I'm going to say, but it's just to kind of clarify what we mean by aid effectiveness. Um, I'm then going to speak briefly about some of the disagreements that have emerged in the literature over the many years that there's debates going on about aid effectiveness. Um, thirdly, I will um, speak about five uh, lessons that I think can be taken from the more recent literature um, with which um, WIDA in particular has been involved and, and also myself. Uh, that has my thesis being that we have actually learned something new from this recent spate of literature. And then finally, I will conclude with some brief uh, implications. So with that, uh, with that introductory comment, um, so aid effectiveness research essentially um, asks the question, has foreign aid been effective in raising the welfare um, of households, individuals in recipient countries? So for that, uh, reason, we, we, we typically start from the point of departure, as, uh, at least as economists, that there is some reasonably consistent mapping between uh, higher income and higher welfare. And that's why um, a lot of the literature um, has and continues to focus on economic growth as a, not the, a fundamental final performance metric of foreign aid. Of course, that is, you know, uh, there is significant debate about only concentrating on economic growth as a metric of uh, performance, but it is uh, one of the most important ones uh, in principle. So, of course, there's been a lot of disagreements, and to draw on uh, the old adage of Winston Churchill, if you put two economists in a room, you get two opinions, and particularly with foreign aid, you might even get three opinions, uh, which is probably true uh, today. So we know uh, that economists have been divided for, for generations regarding the effectiveness of foreign aid. Uh, and just to give you some, some quotes here, to give you a sense of, of this, Bill Easterly in 2005 complained that spending $2.3 trillion in aid over the past five decades has left some of the most aid-intensive regions like Africa wallowing in continued stagnation. It's fair to say this approach has not been very successful. And famously, on the other side of the debate has been Jeffrey Sachs, who, in various uh, interventions, has identified foreign aid as an important factor in the growth of many developing countries, an example being uh, his comment in 2009, without foreign aid, Rwanda's path-breaking public health successes and strong current economic growth would collapse. Um, and I think as a result of the disagreement in the literature, um, many probably would conclude we haven't really learned a great deal from this kind of uh, research. Uh, two more recent contributions, again from distinguished uh, economists, um, would point to that conclusion at least being prevalent in some circles. For example, Sebastian Edwards in 2014 writes, overall the results from this large body of research have been fragile and inconclusive. Nancy Kian, in a, uh, in a review article published in, uh, last year, again says the empirical literature on the impact of foreign aid is perhaps one of the most controversial ones in development uh, and growth economics, but a large number of studies have emerged to dispute the positive effects of foreign aid. So again, the conclusion being we really uh, haven't learned much and perhaps the positive effects studies um, aren't being uh, maintained in the recent literature. Okay, why so much disagreement? Well, at least there's, um, from my perspective, there's at least four reasons we continue to find disagreement in the literature. The first is the ideological uh, one, which I think we can uh, all um, understand exists, but um, is, is, is gonna be persistent. Secondly, as uh, Patrick mentioned uh, in the introduction, there's the concern of endogeneity. Um, 
aid is mostly given to poor countries. So there is, of course, on the face of it, a relationship between bad economic performance and receiving more aid. And it's difficult to address this. Thirdly, perhaps less appreciated, is there are long uh, chains running from the receipt of foreign aid to aggregate outcomes such as growth. Uh, they're long in two senses. Um, first of all, there's lots of intermediate uh, and multiple causal pathways involved. Um, imagine the case of providing aid, for instance, that goes to the education sector. Well, that will perhaps um, ideally provide more education to uh, children. These children must then enter the workforce uh, in hopefully higher quality or more productive jobs, which would then provide more growth. So that, that chain is long because it has m many causal steps, but it's also long uh, in terms of time. It takes time for these effects to come out uh, in, in terms of aggregate outcomes. Um, the fourth difficulty that the aggregate aid effectiveness literature has faced is, of course, again, as Patrick mentioned, uh, measurement. Aid is not a homogenous good. So that makes it very difficult uh, to make claims about aid because aid may go for different objectives. Um, aid is given by different donors, uh, and the objectives of donors have changed over time, as we know. So this, uh, in addition to the difficulty of actually establishing how much aid a given country has received at any given period of time, makes it very difficult to, to come to sensible answers. So it's difficult. Um, how has the economics profession responded to these difficulties? Well, I think we should uh, be honest and say, yes, it is very difficult to come to clean um, answers about the causal effect of aggregate aid effectiveness. I notice here a typo. It's the aid effectiveness effectiveness which perhaps is a, another question itself, what's the effectiveness of the aid effectiveness literature? But that is a, is a, is a beside the point. Um, but I think we should also note that the difficulty of establishing uh, strong causal relationships at, let's say, the macroeconomic level is not unique to aid. Um, we only need to think of the discussion around uh, immigration uh, and labor market reform as being uh, similar in, in, in the amount of controversy we've seen uh, in the literature. So what should we do as researchers about this? Um, well, one response, which is you know, arguably pretty popular these days, is let's change the question. Let's focus down on those narrow parts or components of aid effectiveness where we can actually obtain rigorous identification of causal effects. And a good example of this kind of literature would be uh, a paper published in the AER last year, which looks at the effect of US food aid on, uh, on conflicts. Um, there's no doubt that this kind of research is, is important, and it will continue. But should we stop here? And I don't think we should. Uh, to again borrow from uh, another distinguished uh, individual, an approximate answer to the right question is worth a great deal more than a precise answer to the wrong question. Not to say that many of these studies are asking the wrong question, but we also need to be aware and at least attempt to answer some of these bigger questions. Because one of the dangers, um, I believe, uh, that if we don't, we run the risk of uh, being exposed to either anecdotal style evidence or weakly supported generalizations from individual studies. And um, I think as uh, Stefan Durkon mentioned uh, yesterday, it's very easy for us to pick individual pieces, pieces of evidence that are going to support a, a particular point of view. Um, so I believe it is, and it remains important to, uh, to undertake rigorous research, trying to tackle uh, these difficult big questions. And the thesis that I will now get onto is I believe that the recent research um, has provided new and reasonably consistent insights about aggregate aid effectiveness. And I just want to take you through what I think are perhaps five main lessons from some of this research. So the first one, which <clears throat> may or may not be a surprise, is that 
there seems to be an emerging consensus that aid has enhanced growth. And here I, I've just summarized um, a, a number of the, uh, the recently published studies since 2008. Um, and it, this just summarizes the, essentially the main, uh, the main estimates of the relationship between aid and growth. And the column beta here provides you with uh, regression coefficient estimates. Uh, but what's important is that while there is admittedly you know, a substantial distribution of effects, as one would, it, as one would find or expect to find in uh, using different methods, different data, and so on, uh, we do come out at um, an approximate average effect, which says, roughly, if you were to give um, a country around 10% of its aid in GDP over a long period of time, I'll come back to that, you might expect a growth dividend of about an additional one percentage point in growth over that period of time, roughly speaking. So this is where um, a lot of recent studies seem to be pointing towards um, positive effects of growth um, of this kind of order of magnitude. And, and it's notably that they're also in the same reasonably or roughly the same order of magnitude. Secondly, uh, there seems to be a positive effect on other outcomes as well, which is nice to hear. It's not just economic growth that seems to have been improving, other uh, outcomes which are consistent with a reasonably logical causal chain seem to be there. For instance, we have uh, evidence of some reductions in the poverty headcount, improvements in investment, and uh, increases in human capital, schooling, and, uh, and health outcomes. Thirdly, and I think this is important to stress, the, the positive effects of aid appear, or at least appear in the data, over longer time frames. We need to uh, be observing these countries and be open to the possibility that it takes a long time for aid to emerge um, to have positive macroeconomic effects. Um, some simulation evidence uh, that I've been involved in um, using a very kind of simplified general equilibrium economy uh, leads to the same conclusions. So if we simulate uh, an, a, a basic uh, economy with a reasonable set of parameters, we also find the same conclusions. So it's, it's consistent with, with, with what we would expect. Fourthly, <clears throat> the magnitude of the macroeconomic effects of aid are moderate. Well, moderate isn't necessarily the right word, but it's moderate relative to the expectations um, that some people have spoken uh, that aid should, should provide. The idea that aid is going to dramatically and fundamentally improve performance uh, of economies is... Uh, Re is well, at least of the magnitudes of aid, is, is misplaced. And we need to have realistic expectations of what aid can do. So again, uh, the, the, the same kind of simulation evidence points to an internal rate of return of roughly 10% on average. So the implication of this is that concessional funding is important. Uh, many developing countries cannot uh, raise commercial debt um, at uh, rates which are um, significantly um, below, say, around 10%. Ghana, I believe, is now going back to the eurobond market to try and refinance, uh, refinance some of its debt and is facing uh, quotations in excess of 9 to 10%. So if your rate of return, on average, is only around 10%, there is an important role for concessional long-term funding. We shouldn't forget that. And fifth, human capital upgrading appears to be a very important channel through which aid uh, improves growth and macroeconomic outcomes. And again, that relates back to the fact that we should take a long-term view rather than a short-term view. Um, further information, I'd be happy to share links to, to, to the research um, uh, to which I'm referencing here. So, Finally, what are the implications of this, uh, <clears throat> both uh, for research and more, more generally? 
Well, as I've already said, there is an emerging view of a, a, a consistent and positive effect uh, of aggregate um, aid. And of course, this is on average over time. And I think why has this new, why has this consensus been emerging? Well, I think it reflects better data. Um, certainly, we now have a much longer span of data than many of the earlier studies in the literature. We now have 30 to 40 years of aid data in many countries and can suddenly, well not, we can start seeing these effects emerging over time. And also, also the attention to the endogeneity of, um, of aid, although imperfect, of course, at the aggregate level, um, has been better. Um, and as I said, we, we do recognize and we should recognize that individual studies are fragile. It is not difficult, and there's, uh, you know, there's any number of papers have been, uh, have been written saying, well, if we change some assumptions or restrict the data in certain ways, we get different results. That is correct. That's natural. But once we look at the body of the literature, uh, we do also get a more consistent uh, 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 set of results, and that's important. Um, we should also recognize that the, what we might call the clean but narrow, or clean and narrow studies, um, are highlighting more and more, you know, the complex and heterogeneous um, effects of aid. And this deserves greater scrutiny, and perhaps there are policy lessons that we can take out of this, at least to avoid the damaging effects of aid in given circumstances. Um, one of the areas that remains uh, less explored and there remains uh, perhaps more debate now is regarding the institutional effect, effects of aid. It is still plausible that aid may uh, improve growth, and perhaps damage institutions. We're not 100% sure of that as yet. Um, and there's no doubt that in terms of uh, where the literature is going, aid effectiveness can be improved. Uh, and this is particularly in the area of donor behavior and, and in terms of the, the kind of international agreements and international context uh, under which aid operates. So I think there is a, a, you know, a whole range of uh, uh, additional research that is, uh, that is important to continue in this area. And with that, I will conclude. Thank you very much.